Good morning. Yes, I know we're in Advent, but we return now to the letter of Paul to the Romans. And I'm glad we are dealing with this part of the letter during Advent, because Paul now in chapters 12 and 13 and the following chapters is trying to show the church how it should relate one to another and how it should relate to the society in which it is living. First of all, he says to the church, I want you to renew your minds. I want you to work it out again what it is that God is saying to you, what it is that God is asking of you, and how you should use your gifts to be a blessing to one another. At this present time, the church is mainly shut down, unable to communicate in this way. But we as Christians should still be aware of our brothers and sisters, still be praying for them, and when possible, exercising our gifts to each other, not just praying, but helping and ministering to each other whenever we can. But now we come to the 13th chapter of this particular letter. And here Paul says something quite specific. He says, we as Christians must submit to the secular authorities. In other words, we must be good citizens. Now, this particular chapter has caused many, many problems to Christians over the years. See, how about Christians living, for instance, in Nazi Germany? How far should they submit to the civil authorities, which was, of course, the Third Reich? And Christians have had great problems with this particular rule that we should submit to the authorities. But what I want to point out to you simply is this. When Paul was writing to the Christians in Rome, the Christians there were being persecuted at that particular time. The great Neronic uh, persecutions were about to start. Martyrdoms were about to take place. Peter himself crucified on Vatican Hill. Paul himself, in just a couple of years, killed with a sword in the same place. Christians were being rounded up and killed because of their faith. And he still says, be very careful with this one. You're not a, a, a terrorist group. You're not an anti-government group. You are, in fact, a group which is trying to be good citizens as far as you're able. You know, in Nazi Germany, a lot of Christians had to say to the Third Reich, we do not agree with what you're doing. We know we should submit to you, but we want to stand up and publicly declare that what you're doing is wrong. And as they did it, they knew that they would be arrested and they would also go into concentration camps and they too would be killed in those concentration camps. You see, they were submitting and yet declaring the truth at the same time. Remember Jesus in the temple when he was asked a simple question, should we pay taxes to Caesar or not? He said, give me a coin. And they gave him the coin. And he says, whose image is on the coin? And they said, Caesar's. He says, then give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and give to God the things that are God. And this particular balance has always been a difficult one for Christians as they look at the society in which they're living. How far should they stand out against the government? At what point should they start breaking the laws? At what point should they become disobedient? Always a very difficult point, and one which we have to think about in every age in which we are living. But Paul goes on now speaking to these Christians in Rome, and he says, not only must you submit to the civil authorities, but you must love one another. You must take the laws that God has given you and you must exercise those laws with one another. For love, he says, is the fulfilling of the law. So we've got this group of people trying to love one another and trying to submit to the civil laws at the same time and trying as well to be good people to the people around them, helping them and caring for them wherever they may be. You know, in the plagues, of the Middle Ages. Christians went in to minister to those who were dying from the plague. 
They were the ones who cared for them. Why did they do it? They did it because they knew they had eternal life. They knew that death could not touch them. They knew that this is something they needn't worry about. And they went into those situations. And Christians have done this all through time. Because they are free of the fear of death. They're able to go in and minister in these situations. And it is because of this that the Christian church became so popular. It is because of this that the Christian church became such a public image of service and love to the people around them. So now Paul is saying to the Christian church in chapters 12 and chapter 13, I want you to renew your minds. I want you to grow up. I want you to become the people that God wants you to be. I want you to be good citizens submitting to the civil authorities. I want you to love one another, care for one another, and love the world around you as well. Because if you do that, you will be fulfilling the law. Amen.